Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to Blood Splattered Cinema. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just watched The Ranger, one of the most recent uh, Shudder-exclusive horror movies that hit, and is essentially a punk rock slasher film set in the woods. Yep. <laughs> um, and by yep. punk rock, we mean the movie follows a group of... Uh, punk kids from a punk club that get into trouble with the law and then escape to one of the kids uh, cabin in the woods that their uncle had mm -hmm. and then end up getting killed one by one by the titular ranger and that's the movie <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a really good highly stylized uh, yep. slasher flick it's it's very much a hybrid of like an 80s slasher flick and an 80s punk movie like a um uh like a repo man repo or man something, yeah something like that um, I think it does a really good job of capturing like punk kids. Yeah. Um, e even yeah. even if the... actually more than um, more than a Revo Man, I would actually go with Roger Corman's Suburbs. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suburbia. Something like that is actually a great example. Um, even more so because it's not it's not psychedelic like um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> like it's, like it's not as weird as Revo Man. You <laughs> that's know? a good point. Um, uh, it does a good job of capturing like the punk kids and how they're kind of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, it's pretty fucking gnarly, so if you like some gore and violence, you're going to get that. Yeah, you'll get plenty of violence. On the downside, it is very low budget, so most of the acting is very much like 80s cheesy movie levels. Like, I was thinking... Yeah, about, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like I kept thinking of things like, you know, like Night of the Demons. Yeah, that was or, the exact you know, one I thought of. Like, like eat a bowl of fuck, fuck guy. Yeah. Not the greatest actor ever, but still enjoyable to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, like, <laughs> top-notch acting. No. no. That, that, that's not really here, but if you want thoroughly entertaining mm -hmm. to the point where you're, you, you're not going to mind at all... You know, um, from a slasher standpoint, I probably could have used a bigger body count, but that's like a minor thing. Like, this, this yeah, is... yeah, yeah. There were fewer. How, how to put it? Like the the places where the uh, the punk rock stuff is in the movie would normally be where the slasher movie just did the gratuitous kills. Yes, yeah. You know, with that said, it with that said, it was a good comment. It was a good combination because I like trade off because I like both of those things. Wasn't as much of a problem for me. I yeah. just, I'd like kills. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, I don't like gratuitous kills. I like every kill that means yep. something. Well, every kill in this means something. That's very true. You know, so if you like that. Um, I should warn people, though. Um, most of the characters in this movie are highly unlikable, with the exception of the main character and, to a certain extent, the villain. Yeah. So um, if, if, if unlikable characters are like a thing that personally bugs you, be warned about that. But at least the main characters that you're supposed to care a little bit more about, you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I really liked... Um, one thing I really liked about the punk aesthetic of this movie is that it definitely felt like... It didn't feel like... Obviously, it was low budget, so they couldn't get a lot of the rights to, like, actual punk gear and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Like, actual, like, punk patches for actual bands. So it felt like a lot of the stuff in this movie was handmade for the movie. And that gave it almost a more authentic feel. Well, we, we, we know, we actually know for That's a true. fact that it was handmade That's true. because um, our friends, uh, Mr. Lobo and his wife, Dixie, were part of the uh, art production of this uh, movie, particularly yep. the uh, mosh, the uh, the punk rock scene, and Dixie also did like all the patches that are on the main character. She's one jacket. of the she's one of the uh, patch people. There's a couple patches. Oh, there's people. a couple. Yeah, okay, there's a couple of them, but they were, you know, like their fingerprints are all over the movie, and in, in, I'm sure in like if you freeze frame, you could probably see Mr. Lobo in the corners, you know, with, during with, the with punk rock, beer, like during scene. the punk rock thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Lobo, uh, he is a horror host from in Cinema Insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, some of you uh, old school horror fans will remember him. Uh, others of you, uh, you should check out his shit. Um, he's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you yeah. like, if you like your Elvira's and your Joe Bob's, you should like your Mr. Lobo. Yeah, you should like your Mr. Lobo's. You <laughs> can, I think you can primarily find him on Roku. There's not much more to say until we get to the spoilers. So I highly recommend The Ranger if you like '80s uh, throwback movies. If you like punk rock, if you like slashers, then just, just two thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and if you want something to compare it to, yeah, yeah. I think of it as Roger Corman's Suburbia meets uh, My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, it's also available currently on Shutter to watch if you want to watch it. So uh, go subscribe to Shutter and check it out. And with that said, let us move on to the spoilers. 
So yeah, the only thing really to spoil about this movie is like the interesting like through line it has about wolves. Yes. Because uh, basically the movie opens up with this little girl and the ranger who turns out to be our titular ranger. And like, apparently something has happened, some sort of incident and the police have arrived to get the little girl, but the ranger has formed some sort of connection yeah, with yeah, her. Yeah. He becomes, he's strangely obsessed with her. And he's like telling her this story about how wolves used to rule this land and that today you became a wolf and all whatever, but we don't quite know what he means by that. Like what, yeah, how did like, she become a wolf? Fuck? Um, and then we flash forward to the future where we meet the main character who's now become a punk rock chick in the middle of the city with her really shitty gaslighty boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who, who like really tries to act tough, but is actually a fucking pansy and it's obvious. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, they get in trouble with the law and they end up going to the cabin. And as uh, later on in the movie, we basically find out that her and this ranger guy had this connection because when she was a little girl, she accidentally killed her uncle. Played by Larry Fassenden. Yeah, played by Larry Fassenden. In case you didn't know, this movie was produced by Larry Fassenden. He shows up as he always does. And, uh, yeah, so this this thing's got pedigree. <laughs> this thing's got pedigree. I mean, it actually has more to pedigree because uh, the woman who directed this, which, by the way, this is directed by a woman, so if you want to support women in horror, check it out, um, was also the producer of a couple other movies I've vlogged, like Darling. <laughs> oh, oh, I I've, I've actually haven't seen Darling. It's basically, it's like a, it's like, like a uh, Roman Polanski esque movie, like like his movies, like Repulsion, like the ones about oh, like, okay. girls yeah. in urban environments going crazy. Yeah, it's basically a movie like that. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> she, uh, basically, and and because of this, the uh, ranger basically covered it all up and made it look like a wolf ate the yeah. uncle. Yeah. And she's kind of blacked out a lot of this in her own mind and is kind of almost bought into the whole eaten by wolves thing, even though yeah, she still has nightmares yeah. about shooting her uncle. And uh, it's very uncomfortable to go for her to go back to this cabin, but it's the only alternative they have because her boyfriend accidentally fucking almost killed a cop. Not, no, not accidentally. He didn't act. He, it was purposefully. He stabbed a cop. a cop. He may or may not have killed We're him. not sure if he's dead. We're not sure if he's alive, but we know that they're fucked. <laughs> yeah. So they've gone to this cabin and she's uncomfortable. And over the course of the movie, then we find out about that, about their past. And so there's this weird, weird through line of her kind of coming into her own as a metaphorical wolf. Yeah. Like there's this really interesting scene in which her and her friends are in the cabin and she's very, this cabin is from her childhood. And so she doesn't want it to be tainted. So like them smoking in the living room is like bugging her and like all the trashing that they normally do because they're punk kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, let's start a bonfire and burn shit. Let's spray tag the trees is bugging the shit out of her. Um, there's a scene in which, uh, one of her friends is trying to get her to loosen up and it's just like, come on, like we can howl all we want. Howl with me. Yeah, and she's yeah, just yeah. like yelling real loud. And it's a weird thing for her to say howl instead of just scream. Yeah. But that makes more sense as you watch more of the movie. You're like, Oh, this whole movie is about her becoming a predator, becoming yeah. a wolf so that she can defeat the ranger who is the current dominant. Yeah. 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 Predator. He's, the, yeah he's the alpha predator. Yeah. At the moment. Yeah, and oh, the th God, the thing that's so weird about the Ranger is he's he's got that thing that the Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles '80s cartoon had, mm. which is he's super fucking lawful about petty things. Yes, you know <laughs> it's sort of like littering. The penalty's <laughs> death. You know, like you. Whoa! Yeah, I loved it. It's like watching like a slasher killer who, instead of being like a chaotic evil, like a Freddy Krueger, and just spouting one-liners about murders or whatever, he's citing like laws and jurisdictions and regulations as he kills yeah. them. It's like watching a paladin kill someone as a slasher killer. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's so <laughs> it's you know, like oh my god. Like 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 <laughs> it's shit like. Oh, like uh, owning, uh, bringing an alcoholic beverage into the park is strictly prohibited under Article C six C sixteen of the so and so fucking yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he'll shoot the person dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and he says weird things. <laughs> but like, he's like, by the power vested in me by President Harry S. Truman, <laughs> I will protect this national park from filth and garbage like you. Yeah. And just like, yeah. Yeah. As he's shooting people in the face, shooting them in the face, axing them in the face, putting, setting bear traps for them and treating them like animals. Yeah. He even had, they even revealed later on, he has like cages of like hunters that he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basement. Like this is just something that he does while he's up there. This is what he does. 
He just he yep. captures people in the woods. He fucking tortures and them. And probably like the biggest, weirdest spoiler in this entire movie is that there's a point where he gets the main character in one of those cages. And when she wakes up after being unconscious, he is in a corner with a wolf pelt on his head. Yeah. Whimpering like a fucking dog. And turning around, it's like, oh, my cub has come home. Arr, Ooh, my yeah, cub yeah, yeah, is like, home. Arr, arr, and like running up to the cage and sniffing it and like acting like a dog. And it is simultaneously hilarious, like an 80s horror movie. Yeah. But it's also creepy as fuck. Well, it reminded me of a lot of the scenes from Creep about Peach Fuzz. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because they were both, sim it's both simultaneously cringy, hilarious, and creepy it's as It's like fuck. Peach Fuzz or that scene in Tusk when he reveals we're going to fight as walruses. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh wow i wasn't expecting the movie to go here i just thought he was just gonna kill them one by one and then by the end she turns her weapon against him like a normal slasher i did not expect him to put on a wolf pelt and start howling naked next to her cage yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's yeah you basically yeah th th this character the thing that's interesting this is the this is the touch that i really liked about it the killer, I know I mentioned like My Bloody Valentine before, but the killer that it actually fucking reminded me of is the one from the first Slumber Party Massacre. Oh, yeah, I could the see that. The guy with the yeah. drill. Yeah. You know, that was the one that he reminded me of yeah, because I see that. just like him, the the the, the driller killer. God, what's, do we, we can't even remember that character's name. Uh, he, he, for most of the movie, he's just referred to as the driller killer. So okay, yeah. so the slumber party driller killer. You see him both as a monster and as really pathetic. Yes, and the, and and the Rangers, the Rangers very similar. The same, yeah. And and it does have one of those climaxes where like she's like fighting him using his own weapons and his own tactics yeah. and tools, and it's just like you are just like me. Say we are the same as she's beating his face in and shit. Yeah. Oh man. And I love the moment when she actually just fucking like full on beats his face in, and he's like a bloody this mess, and then she just screams, but her scream sounds like a howl. Yeah. Because she's become the wolf. <laughs> and then to put a cap on that, after she's defeated him and she's the only one who walks away because all her friends are fucking slaughtered over the course. Yeah. Of this yeah. Movie. She's the only one who lives. She movie. walks into the woods, walks right up, and a wolf comes up to her and then howls like she's the new leader of the pack. Yeah, and then smash <laughs> cut to credits. <laughs> um, I thought this movie's a blast. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It's only like seventy minutes. It's not that long. It's not that complicated, but it, it packs a lot of fun in those seventy minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really. It's only. It's, yeah, it's really minutes. short. It's really short. Damn. It's like seventy or eighty minutes. It's like really short time. Oh damn. I. I <laughs> okay. I thought. I thought it was a full ninety. You no, know? No. No. Oh man. <laughs> Well, good movie. Um, like, and, and there's a lot of little things the movie does that I kind of appreciate. I like that there is just like this casual gay punk couple. Oh yeah, that's part of their friends yeah. group. They're dicks too, and I also like that that they're like just because they're the gay couple doesn't mean they have to be nice people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just as shitty as the not as well. Not, they're not as shitty as the boyfriend. The boyfriend's the worst. He's he's an he's extra because like throughout most of the movie, um. The main character is the only one who seems to be taking the fact that they either killed or nearly nearly killed a cop and are on the run and like have a shit ton of drugs on them and shit. And seems to be the only one taking it seriously is like, what do we do now? We have to like leave, go to Canada. We can't be here. There's there's an APB out that matches our descriptions. We gotta like yeah yeah yeah, and we don't blend. She's you the know? only one. Like they're acting like she's acting completely irrational and emotional about this, which she is being emotional, but she's not being irrational. Yeah, and and the boyfriend keeps acting like she is, and it it feels super gaslighting because it's well, like, I think it was supposed to because he's the one acting super irrational and just like oh let's just sit around and party or whatever and just like yeah that's all fine and dandy and fun but. We need to get out of here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we gotta, we gotta worry about tomorrow today. They also hint you know? that the boyfriend um had things not gone shit gone to had the shit not hit the fan was most likely gonna cheat on her with that other girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had a, yeah. A very, he's, uh, he's gonna cheat on her. It's very obviously the reason it didn't happen is murder starts happening beforehand. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and uh, he just has no respect for anything like that she holds sacred yeah 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 it, it 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 it's it's a portrayal of like a young man that i think it takes a woman to tell yeah because they they really get across this like oh man this is a guy's a really manipulative shit heel yep but at the same time you see why she's a 
fallen for it. Like she, she, you know? he starts getting mad at her for like trying to save their friend who was shot. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing? Oh, you're going to go to the ranger? Oh, like when something goes bad, you just go to an authority figure. And it's just like, well, they, there's no one else they can go to. So what do you expect her to yeah, do? Yeah, they don't know he's the killer yet. <laughs> it's like his, his plan was just to shoot her up with drugs and hope she feels better. It's like she was shot in the head. She's yeah. not going to feel better. Yeah, yeah. this isn't this isn't going to magically fix itself. We we need a, we need a professional here if we're going to have any hope. Yeah, when I say that the, like the, some of these other characters are just complete assholes, I mean it. Like, it's, Yeah, yeah. Um, but even so, like like some of the kids, like even though they're assholes, you do kind of feel bad for them. Like I did feel bad for um for uh the gay couple. <laughs> oh yeah, because like it's one it's one thing to be an asshole; it's another thing to have that shit yeah. happen to you. Even the party girl, I felt bad for, even though it was obvious that she was gonna hook up with the uh, other girl's uh, boyfriend. She just seemed like she was just gonna have a fun she's time, an idiot. And she was you know? also not part of the violence that happened earlier, so it makes sense that she's less concerned about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she's not getting it. She is not getting that. As, there was as a far major as she's crime concerned, was she was kidnapped because they stole her van and she happened to be sleeping in it. Like, it's, yep. <laughs> you know. Yep. You know. Oh God, I can't even. The only one where you feel like, yeah, I don't feel bad for you at all boyfriend. is the boyfriend 100 you know? that's that's the guy you which is weird because she's all. he's the one that he and she ends up like stepping in and defending when she gets a hold of the gun yep and it's just like ah oh, don't you get away from my boyfriend it's pretty badass but at the same time i'm like i think that's the one character you can let die yeah <laughs> yeah trade up I, one, one of the options. things that worked in that act in the boyfriend's favor is the actor who plays the boyfriend is not that great um, but it kind of works in his favor because it means every time that character is trying to act tough, it comes across as oh, false. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. So I, you is... can tell it's just like, okay, that's why he was cast in this role. Because even though his performance isn't that, like, super, it does add to the performance the fact that he's bad at acting tough. Yeah, yeah. And that and that kind of speaks to the, the uh, intent of doing this as an 80s movie. Yes. Because you're not necessarily... Now, by the way, when we say not that great an actor, we're talking like... Friday Thirteenth Part Three level. Yeah, yeah. Like we're not talking like, oh my god, that's completely unacceptable. It's no. terrible. It's horrible. It's the worst thing ever. No. It's like no, 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 no. The, the acting in Friday Thirteenth Part Three isn't that great either. Most of it is on par with an eighties B movie. Yeah, Even the yeah. better performances, like the Ranger or the main character, are still on that kind of level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's the the context, and that's the way the movie was shot. It's the way it was intended, and it comes together beautifully. Yep. So every the, the ironic thing is, despite the fact that the level of acting ability is highly variable. Everyone hit the mark they needed to hit. I have to agree. I have to agree. You know, and that, and that sometimes, hey, it's better than good. It's good enough. Yes. <laughs> so um, I highly recommend The Ranger. It is currently available on Shudder. So go subscribe and check them out. And we are not at all like, like, um, uh, affiliated with Shudder. We are just fans. We'll tell you if we ever are. If we're, Trust us. If, if it happens, we will tell you. Right mm -hmm. now, we're just fans. Just call. Um, and so where can they find you, Camp Jack? You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and you can... And I also stream twice a week on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and at 9 p.m. on Sunday Pacific Standard Time. And you know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on Facebook. Look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I will be there. Oh, shit. We also got that Patreon. Yes. We do have a Patreon. <laughs> what the fuck are you scared of shit out of me? <laughs> We do have a Patreon. I will put both of our Patreons in the description below if you want to support either of us. Um, uh, even a dollar a month goes a long way. Um, and with that said, peace out, my fellow gorehounds, and I will catch y'all later. You son of a bitch. <laughs>